if you recognize that opening and the theme music, then I have something I think you'll be interested in. And even if you don't recognize it, I'm sure that the words, winter is coming, somehow spoke to you and intrigued you. Hi, my name is Bill Hubri, and I'm teaching a summer course at Yale University, and uh, I'd like to tell you a little bit about it. Of course, there's a connection between the course and George R. R. Martin's epic series, Game of Thrones, and the HBO series uh, that is based on it. We'll be uh, looking at uh, the first book, Game of Thrones. Uh, we'll be watching the entire first season. But our main effort here will be to compare Game of Thrones and Martin's work with what we might consider to be the originals that were written in Northern Europe some seven to eight hundred years ago. So we'll be taking a closer look to begin with at the text Beowulf, possibly written around 800 from a single manuscript uh, from the early uh, 11th century. This is the Seamus Haney translation, I think that is by now probably the best known, certainly one of the best translations. We'll be using the illustrated edition, which is very, very attractive, has some great illustrations to go along with uh, what really is a very good text. Beowulf, you might be familiar with to some extent. Um, of course, there's the battle against Grendel, Grendel's mother, uh, and in the second part, uh, the battle between Beowulf and the dragon. Dragons obviously are one connection that we'll want to explore more closely between Martin's work and the original epics. Next, we'll be reading something uh, which in English we would call the Epic of the Nibelungen. Now, in German, it's the Nibelungen Lied. Uh, this is a brand new translation that uh, just came out. It's my own translation, and uh, I hope you'll enjoy it. Uh, it's, um, it's got uh, three parts to the story. The first um, is basically the story of the hero Siegfried, also a dragon slayer and his wife, Krimhild, who is a princess at the court in Worms, which is on the Rhine River. The second part is often called Krimhild's Revenge, and without spoiling it for you, that might give you some idea of how things turn out. The third part, actually, um, which is for the first time uh, appended to this work, is called the Klage in German, which we might translate as lament. It's a kind of epilogue to the story. Then we'll be taking a look at the Old Norse version of the Siegfried epic, the saga of the Völsungs. Now, Völsungs, this um, family of Norsemen, there's quite a bit of um, Old Norse mythology involved here. Um, we'll also be in this particular version reading the saga, saga of Ragnar Lothbrok. Ragnar Lothbrok might be familiar to you as a name if you're um, at all a fan of the TV series Vikings. In addition, we'll look at some shorter works, uh, one by Tolkien. No, we're not reading Lord of the Rings and we're not reading The Hobbit, but he did write actually a shorter work um, on this uh, legend of the hero Siegfried. So we'll take a close look at that. Obviously, Martin has been influenced by Tolkien, but he certainly was influenced as well um, by these original works. So that's it in a nutshell. I, uh, I hope you'll join us this summer. I'd be happy to meet you. I think it uh, is going to be an exciting course. If you go to the Yale Summer Session website, summer.yale.edu, I think you can find the course under Winter. It's listed both as Literature 180 and German Studies 207. So have a look, and uh, I hope to see you this summer in New Haven. Remember, winter is coming. <laughs>